Hi, this is uh, PJ and welcome back to my channel with another video. Today is the oral warning module, uh, the topic. And this little device that you can see here, this metal box, uh, is where all the different warning sounds in the 737 cockpit are generated. It houses a loudspeaker, a clacker, or two clackers for the overspeed warning and the fire warning bell as well as different horns and chimes. It's a real unit, it was built in 1991. So in an earlier version of the 737 and the 737 Classic, don't know which exact model, but it's uh, quite similar to the next generation version. The next generation version would have a little uh, switch up here that I didn't place on top since I didn't really want to alter the unit but uh, so far it's more or less connected and working I've screwed it onto the flight deck solution main instrument panel I had to drill two holes back in here so that the unit's cannon plug uh, those little connectors at the back would uh, fit through and I can connect all the different wires. And right now I'm going to put my camera on here so that I have my hands free. And we can turn it on. So right now the aircraft is in a cold and dark state. And listen carefully once I took a little switch. I don't know if you could hear it, but it made a nice uh, cracking sound when the speaker came on. It's right now connected to, to the DC voltage. I have to look it up whether it would uh, turn on with DC or AC voltage. I'm not too sure yet. Oh crap. Uh, there's a cable. Ah. I was losing its connection my test setup here. That's why we have no lights in the overhead. Let me correct that. Oh yeah. That's not the original power supply of uh, Flight Deck Solutions, but 12 volts as well. So just uh, let me check that. Okay, there we are again. <laughs> so, uh, power to the overhead panel and battery switch is turned on. Now we can speed things a little bit up and delete all the failures and pros in here. So the DE user booting and the IRS alignment. Let's switch to the generator one and two here. Oh yeah, that's why it wasn't working. Sure. Okay, so as you can see, also a nice feature. Once I connect uh, uh, the generators here, the backlighting comes on and the floodlight. Oh, yep, that was the speaker sound again. Okay, so there's power and let's do some testing. I go back here since the throttle you can see is not connected right now. I just had it there for checking whether it would still fit with the oral warning module in place. So it's not uh, the real height but uh, sideways it's in uh, the actual position and it would fit quite nicely. Should be no problem although it's a tight fit. Okay so we have to advance some thrust here. Watch what happens. Take off configuration warning. Okay, let's put the aircraft in the air. Wire the slew function. Thank you. 
Okay, aircraft. This is slew, doesn't matter. Okay, let's put on some auto throttle. And the autopilot's coming on. That is fine. So, first or second sound is the autopilot disconnect sound. So, let's disengage the autopilot. You can hear it, the sound of the real module sounds different than the prosim generated sounds and the cool thing is the cool thing is uh, that it won't uh, stop whining unless you really cancel the message here and that is uh, true to its real counterpart at least from what I've been told let's do it again Okay, so autopilot back on, and the next thing we're gonna do is an overspeed situation. So you can hear the overspeed clacker. That one's quite powerful. There we go. It's so powerful that even the LED light strips are flickering. I'm not too sure what to do about that. It doesn't look very healthy, but uh, since it's only a few seconds and the expensive flight deck solution backlighting is not affected by it, uh, I'm probably not gonna change it right now unless somebody has a clue on what to do in that case. Okay, that was the overspeed clacker. Next thing would be the gear warning. The warning horn when there is no um, gear down. When we okay, there we go. So that's uh, the gear warning horn. Pretty loud and the sounds Okay, now yeah, that's full package. <laughs> yeah, okay, we crashed. So that's that. Anything else uh, there is connected? Yeah, the intermittent horn, we heard that during the takeoff warning or cabin altitude. There's uh, the steady horn, that was the gear warning. There's the overspeed clacker. The fire bell is not connected right now since uh, it generates uh, some heavy electromagnetic uh, field that sort of um, makes the relay stick. So once it kicks in, the relay is not able to shut off. And instead I will have to use uh, one of those uh, solid state relays where there is no uh, physical connection or mechanical connection and between the circuits, but an optical one. Uh, so with that it won't stick anymore. So that is uh, shipping from China, from Saint Smart, I guess. And uh, should be there within the next week so I can connect that as well. Okay, yeah, well, let's have a look at the back how everything is connected. So, this is how it works. First of all, you can see uh, the power supply unit. Up here, that's a regular computer power supply, supplying 12 uh, volts via uh, the cable string uh, down here. Uh, from there, uh, 12 volt are fed uh, via this cable into uh, the transformer unit. Uh, but before that happens, the cable is split and uh, running into my uh, 
my uh, open cockpits relay card so that the relay card can decide whether the whole uh, oral warning module and the transformer unit uh, should be supplied with power so I can switch the whole thing on and off. Um, that's what generates those nice uh, clacking sound when the speaker is turned on. Right now it's fed with 13.6 volts because every time the, the power supply uh, um, is being um, drawn with uh, current, then it's just jumping up to 13.6 volts for whatever reason instead of 12. But uh, the transformer unit uh, nevertheless will smooth everything out and supply a steady stabilized uh, 28 volts uh, to the oral warning module. So from there, there's the wire running into the cannon plug at uh, the back here where I uh, drilled those holes so that the cannon plugs will fit through. And that's what switches the whole module on. And to trigger each sound, you will have to use another interface. And that's the Arduino Mega 2560 that is controlled uh, by Prosim. Um, uh, to the left of it, you can see uh, another relay card with eight channels. So each sound that should be played uh, by the oral warning module is uh, triggered uh, electrically uh, whenever 28 volt uh, ground supply are fed to the specific pin. So for the clacker, there's uh, one pin and there's another one for the fireball. And each time those uh, shall play, you just have to uh, supply it with the 28 volt ground and then it will play. So that's pretty pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Only thing annoying is, or well, can be annoying uh, when you have chimes, for example, that you can hear the relay sound. It doesn't really matter with uh, with the loud bells and clackers. But if it gets annoying, um, I might switch to uh, one of the solid state relays uh, that actually produce no sounds but are uh, more expensive. And for DC versions, DC power is needed. They are more hard to get, but same smart as uh, some of those as well. And it's a cool feature. The, the different sounds that the warning module generates uh, sound uh, different, a little different to what you can hear in pros. And that does the trick as well, but you can somehow hear that this is a heavy electromechanical sound that is generated within the module. And I think it uh, really adds to the immersion. Okay, yeah, that's also new. There's a nice uh, Logilink uh, metal USB hub that you can actually screw onto uh, the main instrument panel here. Nice industrial-like design. Uh, looks way better than those uh, cheap plastic USB hubs. Okay, so wiring is working. Next step is uh, to put everything probably to the wall here and have some uh, plexiglass sheets uh, laser cut where uh, those modules will fit in nicely. So that's all for now. I hope to see you back soon on one of my videos. In the meantime, take care and goodbye.